In this video, we're going to introduce a definition of sinusoids. And we're going to start from very elementary or first principles. So our objectives are to define a sinusoid using trigonometry, that is the geometry of right triangles. This will lead us to a relationship between phasors and sinusoids. Then we will also define the amplitude, phase, and frequency of a sinusoid. Considering the right triangle that I've shown here, if we have an angle of phi and we have a hypotenuse of unit length, then the horizontal leg is going to have length cosine of phi and the vertical leg is going to have length sine of phi. For the units on phi, we're going to use radians. Now to get to the idea of a sinusoid, what we're going to do is let this angle vary with time. And that means that the hypotenuse is rotating some or moving with respect to the two axes. Now this hasn't changed the geometry at all in the sense that the horizontal leg of the triangle remains cosine of this angle. But in this case, the angle is a function of t. So we can think of the length on this axis, x of t, as cosine of phi of t. And there's a couple of things we know based on cosines. We know that since the hypotenuse has length 1, that x of t is going to be 1 when phi of t is 0, 2 pi, 4 pi, and so on. And that x of t is going to be 0 when phi of t is pi over 2. So that would be the case where hypotenuse is oriented up the y-axis here. Or 3 pi over 2, that would be along the negative y-axis. 5 pi over 2, and so on. And of course, it's minus 1 when phi of t is equal to pi. So that would be oriented in the negative x direction. And that also holds for 3 pi, 5 pi, and so on, because if you shift the angle by any multiple of 2 pi, the cosine remains the same. Now we get a sinusoid when we let this angle, phi of t, vary in a linear manner. In other words, we have phi of t become a linear function of t. So I'm going to show a simple case where phi of t is 2 pi times t. So what that means is that my hypotenuse is rotating around at a rate of 2 pi radians per second. So that means that I'm doing one revolution per second since 2 pi radians is one revolution. And if I define my angle this way, then x of t, which is my projection on the x-axis, is going to be cosine of 2 pi t. And that's a sinusoid. We graph that sinusoid as a function of t. And you see that, as expected, when t is equal to 1, 0, my sinusoid has maximum amplitude. That's going to be amplitude of 1 because my hypotenuse lies along the x-axis. And then when I have t equals 1 fourth, the argument of the cosine is going to be pi over 2. And that will have the hypotenuse up here on the vertical y-axis. So x of t is going to be 0. Then when t is equal to 1 half, phi of t becomes pi, so I have cosine of pi, and that's over here on the negative x-axis, so I have negative 1, and so on. As this rotates around, I trace out this cosine pattern. If I look at the projection of the hypotenuse over to the y-axis, trigonometry would tell us that this height is sine of the angle, and therefore I get a sinusoid sine of 2 pi t, and that, of course, is going to start at 0 when t is 0, because in that case, my hypotenuse is along the x-axis, so I have 0. And then as t increases, my hypotenuse is going to rotate up to a maximum when it's aligned along the y-axis. And that occurs at t equals 1 fourth. And then it drops back down to 0 and goes to minus 1 when I've rotated around to this point and so on. We'll ask now what happens if we change the rate of the rotation. And I've been calling this a hypotenuse, but I'm going to start calling it a phasor 
because that's what the terminology is, is we have this rotating around. We're going to call that a phaser. And so I'm going to define my angle of this phaser as phi of t equals 2 pi times, let's say, 5 t. Before, I had 2 pi t, so let's put a 5 in there and see what happens. Well, in one second then, when t is 1, I've gone 10 pi, so I'm rotating 10 pi radians per second, in other words, 5 revolutions per second, or 5 cycles per second. So I'm rotating more quickly by putting a 5 in here. And if I graph that, I see that my sinusoid oscillates more rapidly. So notice the scale is 0 to 1. So I'm oscillating 5 times in a second. And you can count the number of cycles Here's the first cycle, goes from 0 to 0 0.2 seconds, then the second one is 0.2 to 0.4, and so on, and we get five cycles in one second, as we would expect from doing 10 pi radians per second, or five revolutions per second. Now what if I make the rate of rotation slower? So here I've put a one-third instead of what I had 5 or 1 in the previous example. So phi of t is now 2 pi over 3 t. And that means I'm rotating 2 pi over 3 radians in one second. And that corresponds to one third of a revolution or one third of a cycle in a second. And I can graph the corresponding projection onto the x axis here, the cosine which would be cosine of 2 pi over 3 t, as I've shown here, and it follows this oscillation where I get one cycle in three seconds. In other words, it takes me three seconds to go fully around the circle, and of course two cycles in six seconds. Now the next thing I want to change is I want to change the amplitude. In other words, the length of the hypotenuse, or the length of this phaser. And we'll go back to the case where my angle is changing at 2 pi t. In other words, I'm going to one cycle per second. And I can graph the projection onto the horizontal axis in this case. And all that's happened is since my hypotenuse is longer, the projection increases by a factor of a also. And so now my sinusoid goes from a positive amplitude of plus a to a maximum negative amplitude of minus a. In the previous slide, we changed the rate of rotation or the frequency, and we changed the sinusoid. And there's one more thing we can do. We can start at t equals zero with a phase that is not zero. So in this case, I'm going to assume that my initial phase is some number phi zero. So this hypotenuse at time t equals zero starts at angle phi zero, and then it's rotating. Again, we'll let it be at one cycle per second. So I've got 2 pi t plus phi zero for my phase angle. And that gives me a projection on the x-axis of a cosine of 2 pi t plus phi zero. So this ends up changing the phase of my sinusoid and a phase shift of pi over 2 in this case puts the 0 at time t equals 0 because pi over 2 would mean at time t equals 0 or my hypotenuse as it's rotating is going to be lined up with the y-axis and then it's going to go down to the negative x-axis so it's going to decrease to minus a before it swings around and comes back through zero and ultimately up through a to a positive maximum at plus a. So let's recap what we've learned about sinusoids. We've seen that we can use trigonometry and a linear increasing phase angle to define a sinusoid. And this gives us the notion of a phaser that is a vector that starts off at angle phi zero with respect to the x-axis, has amplitude a, and then rotates at a frequency of f. We're going to call that a phaser. This phaser leads to a sinusoid 
based on the projection of the phasor onto the x-axis of x of t equals a cosine 2 pi f t plus phi 0. If we look at the projection onto the y-axis, we end up with a sinusoid based on a sine function as a sine of 2 pi f t plus phi 0. In both cases, we define a to be the amplitude of the sinusoid. We define f to be the frequency, and that's measured in cycles per second, or units of hertz. And phi zero is the phase, also measured in radians. So if we just check the units on the frequency, if since time is measured in seconds, we have seconds for t times the units for frequency, which is cycles per second, and that's going to leave us in units of cycles. And then we have 2 pi radians per cycle. So the argument inside becomes indeed units of radians and consistent with our definition for trigonometric functions.